Good afternoon, everyone. This is Megan Jones from ICEA, welcoming you to another of ICEA's webinar Wednesdays, providing free education and training resources to your workplace, wherever that may be these days. This and all the distance learning series webinars this year have counted and will count towards an hour of training for your CCA recertification. So keep your confirmation in your records for when your certification is due. Today's speaker is Chuck Alexander from the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory. Chuck was our best paper overall winner at the 2017 workshop and is here today to give you some advanced estimating methodologies for conceptual stage development. Thanks, Megan. Uh, as Megan said, my name is Chuck Alexander with Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab. Um, we do a lot of different types of technology development and demonstration at the lab uh, across the DoD and Intel communities, as well as for civil markets uh, such as Homeland Security and, and NASA. And I work for a, a cost team that uh, supports technology development across the laboratory. So we have a, a strong interest in the topic today, which is um, estimating methodologies for early stage development. So um, I'm gonna jump right into this since uh, a lot of slides to cover, so it'll be kind of a brisk uh, uh, pace for the slides. So um, probably the most difficult uh, form of cost estimating across the system life cycle is in the conceptual stages. And there's several reasons for that, but one of the primary ones is you're generally working with new or low technology, uh, readiness level technologies. So there's very little uh, or no analogous systems uh, which, with which to do uh, comparable estimates. And you're also working in the highest level of uncertainty and unknowns in the system life cycle. So, um, because of that, there's, there's a lack of technical engineering and design and performance parameters uh, to drive the, you know, the traditional micro parametric models that, that are available later in the design stages. So you're, you're kind of operating in this, uh, in this uh, technical and cost vacuum over here when you don't have a lot of options. So macro parametric modeling is, is one of the few options, but that's, that's kind of a new uh, a new approach for for estimating. So that's what this research and uh, paper is focused on. So this is another perspective uh, of where where we are in this in the system life cycle. And you can this is kind of the well known uh, GAO graphic uh, known as the cone of uncertainty. Uh, and so we're we're kind of operating on the left here at conceptual phases and uh, again it's the highest level of known and unknown risks and and so it's the most difficult part of uh technology development is is this early stage in the life cycle and inherently technology development is also uh just the highest risk activity in, in overall acquisition and it's it's really probably the toughest challenge in cost estimating because of that and the lack of data that's available. So we'll, we'll look at um, kind of cross sections, vertical cross sections of the uncertainty distributions from actual historical data for, for this early stage uh, uh, later in the, in the uh, presentation. So one of the primary goals and objectives again was to come up with a a way to do cost estimating for early stage development. And uh, a starting point for that was to try to expand the power and precision of the first generation development macro parameter models developed in 2017. And those were based upon system hierarchy level and technology readiness level improvement um, factors that were applied in uh, several different forms and we'll look at some of the higher performing ones uh, that we used as a starting point. So the, the goal was to uh, find other complementary parameters that can use in conjunction with those models that 
would provide a greater or more comprehensive perspective on the cost and risk driver attributes. So some of those uh, included technology and system scale, technology maturity and complexity, uh, the form and function of the technologies and the development difficulty as well as the kind of level of integration and number of interfaces uh, for that particular development. So uh, another goal was to kind of improve the fidelity of the cost uncertainty models that were developed and tailor those to more of the macro parameter category levels that were, were being brought into the model and as well as developing a standard development cost framework with benchmarks so the cost could be applied and uh, allocated across the, uh, the full development cycle and the acquisition phases and milestones as well as technology maturity and readiness levels. So this is a, uh, a view of the one of the higher performing first generation models uh, developed in 2017. It's uh, a multiple regression function, a second order function of the technology readiness level improvement in the system hierarchy level. You can see at the table on the left is the uh, five level system hierarchy levels, uh, which are qualitative med, uh, measures and so they start with a system hardware and software uh, end item and work your way up through component assembly subsystem and system levels uh, the technology readiness level improvements are the difference in the end state and the starting state of the development in terms of tr levels so um, those generally uh, would fall in levels one through five, it's very rare to have a individual development exceed tier, uh, tier level uh, five improvement levels across the development. So um, you can see the 25 point grid here. These, these are uh, results of the, this particular model and, and for each one of these data points, um, there's an associated probability density function that was developed. Um, so you can see the uh, progressive growth, especially when you get up to the system level, the, uh, uh, the costs go up exponentially. So to bring in some new variables, the first, uh, the first task was to investigate uh, the original, the NASA TK database that the original models were based upon. And that's kind of a very unique resource um, that uh, the TK's uh, tool itself stands for Technology Cost and Schedule Estimating Tool. And within that is a, a large database of uh, nearly 3,000 development projects uh, with a, up to 164 fields of, of data that were available. And uh, after doing a thorough analysis of all the possible complementary um, macro parameters to kind of boil to the surface as uh, providing the best um, additional predictive power along with the system hierarchy level and technology readiness level uh, improvement. And those were the <clears throat> research and development degree of difficulty, our RD3 and the technology area. An added advantage of those were the large number of project records available for each. Um, unfortunately, there wasn't enough of, the, of those across uh, uh, the projects for all four parameters to do multiple regression modeling, but so two other um, methods were, were investigated for bringing those into the analysis, and that was a, a mean cost index method and a composite geometric mean method. So this table shows you again, it's a uh, five level qualitative measure similar to the other uh, macro parameters and you can see that the probability of success kind of drops off rather sharply at um, RD3 levels four and five. Um, so this uh, 
this macro parameter uh, though does complement the other the other two rather rather well. So um, uh, we used for for modeling and the technology areas. This is a it's a it's about 15 technology areas NASA uses. And you can see it's fairly broad and diverse in scope. So these have applicability across uh, DOD and Intel space, as well as uh, obviously the civil markets. So the first uh, task in, in terms of working with the data was to segregate the project costs by RD3 level and, and technology area. And this is the results of the RD3 uh, scaling by by RD3 levels. So you can see the the mean and median. There's a there's a good steady progressive uh, incremental uh, costs across the range, which was a good result. And obviously the uncertainty is, is going to be very high just because we are in the development life cycle. So uh, you know, working with the in an area where you have the largest number of known and unknown risks and uh, potential for cost growth. So some of the drivers for the higher uncertainty in this phase include things like um, requirements creep, technology and design changes, operational threat environment deviations, uh, changes in the research organization or staffing and management, uh, supply and chain disruptions and, and other factors. And at the bottom, you can see uh, the uncertainty distribution forms that were developed in, uh, through uh, curve fitting, goodness of fit uh, with the at-risk uh, tool. And we'll look at some of those in a second. So this is uh, an example of just one of the uncertainty distributions developed. And this was for the RD3 level two, which produced a log normal function. And you can see the, in the dark blue, the, the shaded area is the actual probability density function itself with the cumulative probability distribution, uh, the dark blue line across the top. And I wanted to show a typical planning range here. So, which is usually between somewhere between the 50 and 80th percentile. And you can see this is a, a classic kind of uh, distribution shape you get in early cost and schedule estimating with a highly right skewed function um, uh, and the mean or, or 50th percentile over here on the left. Uh, I mean, it's the median and then the mean over here is, is around the 76, 77th percentile. So you get a highly skewed distribution um, and just based on the uncertainty at this stage in development. So this is the results from doing the same analysis for the technology areas. Uh, this produced more mixed results, um, but some, some of the categories uh, consider outliers uh, that are listed here. But one of the reasons for the higher uncertainty with technology areas is these are not progressive in incremental measures, but they're more broad uniform categories that uh, so they span the, the full range of the project scale, complexity, and, and maturity levels. So applying the mean cost index method for both the, the new macro parameters, the first step was to take the project costs and div divide those by the, the population mean for the original models, the system hierarchy and technology and uh, readiness level improvement. Um, based um, regression. So uh, doing that, uh, then you stratify those by the RD3 levels and technology areas to come up with mean cost indexes. Uh, but to apply those to the original models, you want to show sample equivalence between the um, both the RD3 uh, data and the technology area data with respect to the system hierarchy and TIL population uh, samples. And there's two primary methods to show sample equivalence that were applied. One is a two one-sided test 
<clears throat> and the other is the Welch's T test. Um, both of those are used um, in industries like the pharmaceutical industry to show equivalence of uh, efficacy between generic drugs and and brand name drugs. Uh, so they're they're fairly uh, well known and, and common tests that are applied. So the results of those uh, did show equivalence between the samples so that the mean cost index uh, indexes could be applied and brought into the analysis. Um, so uh, those were applied directly to the legacy models and they produced a, a range of three and four parameter models uh, across the four uh, macro parameters. The geometric mean method didn't produce good results, so that was uh, discarded as a, a modeling option. So this is the results of the indexes for the mean and median and standard deviation for both the RD3 and the technology areas. And again, you can see for the RD3 levels, they produced a good progressive uh, incremental uh, index across uh, the range. Uh, which was the result we're hoping for. Uh, and again, the, the uncertainties levels are high just because uh, where you are in the development stage. So um, the next step was uh, to model distribution by curve, doing curve fits at each of the different um, TA levels and RD3 levels. And this shows the results of those distributions for the RD3 levels. Um, and the actual at-risk formulas are in the upper table uh, on the right column. And they, these are consistent with what would be expected based upon the, the joint agency cost schedule and risk uncertainty handbook. Uh, so you see, you'll see, you know, the gamma and log normals are the functions are are commonly found in, in the stage of development. Um, so below, again, you'll see uh, this is for RD3 level five cost index plot. Um, the It's still right skewed, but it's a little tighter distribution um, where the means coming in around the 62nd or 63rd percentile. So that helped uh, tighten up the distributions a little bit. Now, now that we have all the, the data, we can actually produce three and four parameter models. So this table at the left is a partial table of the system hierarchy level, TRL improvement level, and RD3 uh, factors brought into the analysis. And these, so these are the point estimates for those. Uh, and the a full table of these is um, available in the research paper. Uh, one of the appendixes in the research paper and, and these, the, the three parameter model using the technology areas uh, because uh, there were 10, um, 10 different technology areas selected, uh, produced about 250 possible model combinations. Uh, bringing in all four parameters uh, allowed a up to 1,250 possible four parameter configurations across the four parameters. So this expanded the data set quite a bit and, a, and a, an uncertainty distribution was developed for each, each of the different uh, configurations as well. So this, this plot uh, was just to give a little visual uh, to understand the relationship of the variables. Uh, so it was brought into MATLAB and uh, uh, contour topography was developed uh, based upon the 125 point mesh grid for these for this three parameter model of the system hierarchy level uh, technology improvement level in RD3. So you see the vertical axis here. Um, the y axis is the cost. The, the z axis going into the page is the research and development degree of difficulty, and uh, horizontal x axis is the system hierarchy technology ready this level improvement pairing. So this gives you a little uh, better perspective on the relative costs across uh, the variables. Um, these uh, plots can also 
also be you know done for each technology area um, but it gives you a little better perspective on, on the overall cost so the next um, challenge was to find develop a way to develop a, a standard framework across the development phase that would link uh, key milestones and activities and readiness levels to to the cost um, so looking for some some references for that I found two authoritative kind of uh, uh, charts and, and mappings that were had been published one was the manufacturing readiness level desk book uh, from 2016 that's the one on the left and you can see the, the milestones are mapped to achievement of TRL and MRL levels across the, the life cycle and then below was a was another one that produced similar results but also provided more qualitative uh, descriptions of some of the demonstration attributes and um, venues as well as the state of the technology and that that was uh, an article published in the the, the Defense Acquisition Research Journal in 2015. So bringing those two together along with um, the RDT budget activity descriptions and definitions from the DoD controller was able to come up with a consensus framework um, for, across the development phase so uh, that linked the acquisition phase along with the milestones and the readiness levels uh, by these development activities and you can see there's two primary stages <clears throat> for the development uh, the technology development and the system development so that uh, you look at the um, more detailed levels you're you're bringing the advancing the technology from basic research uh, into prototype development and demonstration and then full-scale development and demonstration and finally into operational systems tests and evaluation um, there's also a four level more detailed uh, WBS uh, of this information that's and with with a data dictionary that's available in the backup slides as well as the research paper um, so the, the next drill was to find some benchmarks uh, across the development or acquisition phase that, that we could use to uh, map to that standard framework and two studies I uh, found two studies that had had done that and um, so I adapted those to map those to the acquisition milestones and this was the first one it was uh, um, published in 2019 uh, at a I see a conference or workshop um, by Price Systems, and th this data was based upon 140 uh, ACAT-1 major defense acquisition programs. Um, so you can see that the, the mapping to the TRLs was was linked to the acquisitions milestones. This particular function was an inverse exponential function, and you can see it, it's normalized across the zero to one scale so um, allows you to do a relative cost across across the acquisition phase um, this uh, second study that i found was developed by uh, james linick uh, he was at bcf solutions at the time and again it was another icea uh, training workshop um, paper and this was from 2017 Again, uh, I adapted the results of the, this is a second order polynomial function of costs uh, across the development of the acquisition phase. Again, it's normalized to zero to one scale, showed as percentages here. And this data was uh, used for this study was largely from uh, NASA's Red Star database. So, bringing the results of those two analysis into the, the standard framework and, and comparing them um, gave uh, somewhat different results up through TRL6 but above that they were fairly consistent 
So I needed a third way to uh, kind of triangulate and see, excuse me, which, um, uh, find another uh, way to look at the data to see what, which would be, be more uh, common to across uh, development programs. So because the framework had already developed uh, and looked at um, the RD3 budget activities and definitions as part of the uh, consensus framework, I, I used those to um, come up with a, a third method and that was looking at uh, about 23 years of total R&D development across the DOD uh, from the R1 budget exhibits for each of these budget activity categories. And so we're talking literally hundreds of programs across the entire DOD space across that time frame. And you can see at the bottom, the results of, of that data was uh, more consistent with uh, the Linux analysis. And um, so I looked into reasons for why that might be. And I think a couple thoughts came up that um, part of it was the economies of scale for these large MDAP uh, ACAT1 programs um, with respect to um, especially early development activities and also possibly a larger uh, use of government laboratory and testing facilities that have their own budget. So I don't know if the uh, SAR data captures those types of costs. So that might be one reason why the numbers were uh, lower in the, in the early stages for the, uh, the other analysis. So I ended up using link, the Linux analysis data because it was close to um, the overall DOD uh, results from the R1 budget exhibits. And, and so an added advantage of that is because I had the incremental costs across the TRL uh, levels, I was able to map um, actual um, cost factors or weighting factors for all 36 of the TRL transitions. So there's uh, 36 possible transitions for TRLs one through nine. And so that data allowed uh, me to expand the, the five kind of monolithic technology improvement levels to 36 TRL uh, start and end states. And, and that uh, expanded the data set uh, further. And so it took it from 1,250 to 9,000 potential uh, model configurations uh, across the total development landscape. So that increased the the fidelity of the modeling from 25 kind of a two-dimensional data set from the original models to over 9,000 data points. So, and as in addition that the uncertainty distributions uh, were based on larger populations. So the ranges for those were refined significantly, uh, which, which helped with the uncertainty modeling. So the, this, uh, is a result of a three-dimensional parameter model from that analysis. So you can see, uh, even though it's three parameters, there's, there's four, uh, four data points. So you, the, this represents a system hierarchy level of four, a TRL start of four, TRL end of seven, and RD3 level of five. And again, you can see that the, uh, the uncertainty is kind of, um, has narrowed somewhat the um, the mean value is probably about 11 or 12 percent above the of the median and this is an example of a four parameter model bringing in the technology area um, the particular technology area for this one uh, was robotics and autonomous systems um, and again uh, some results in terms of the skewness of the distribution uh, a little tighter distribution than, than the originals. So in summary, I uh, was able to um, achieve the, the goals that I had set out uh, to improve the um, cost estimating capability for development phase uh, through refining the 
the set of drivers bringing in the, the new comprehensive measures of RD3 and technology area, um, expanding the, the project landscape, uh, again, taking it from 25.2 dimensional grid to a four dimensional uh, higher resolution topography across the development space, and then um, improved the development cost uncertainty modeling. And finally, the, uh, the standard development framework with the benchmarks provides a methodology for being able to forecast and track the uh, development phase across uh, integrated milestones and the activities and readiness levels. Um, so that's that was it. Uh, if there's any questions or uh, if you want a copy of the research paper, you can reach me at my email address on slide 30. And with that, I'll hand it back over to Megan. Thank you. Thanks, Chuck. Um, we have not gotten, we've not gotten any questions thus far. So I'll give you guys a few minutes to get your courage up if you need to. Um, this is on the, this is going to be the last uh, DLS webinar of the year. We will start scheduling our 2020 webinars uh, in January. And also keep in mind the the 2020 workshop has been officially moved to a virtual format. We're still working out exactly what that's going to be, exactly when, exactly all the little pieces of it that are going to be new and different for everyone. So uh, give us a little time, but we will be loud and proud with information as we have it. Uh, Chuck's information, contact information is up on the screen for anybody who needs it. And of course, if you lose it or you're watching at home and somehow can't get, a, get it, write it down, you can contact the ICA business office and we'll be happy to pass you along. Um, oh, uh, we do have a question. All right, but uh, this person's mic isn't working. So what are the next steps? for your research? So for further work, we're um, kind of looking at um, right now, just uh, an overall measure for complexity, system complexity and technology complexity. So we're doing some research because um, that seems to be, that's obviously one of the big drivers in addition to scale to um, any kind of technology development. So we're looking at a way a kind of comprehensive measure that's, that can be practically developed uh, for uh, complexity. Um, so that's that's going to be quite a challenge, but we're that's the next thing we're working on right now. And at the lab, we we do you know a lot of technology development and demonstration up through the uh, prototype phase, and then we kind of hand it off to uh, industry and where it's competitively bid and and system integrators and large defense contractors will will bid on the different technology developments that um, that we kind of start working with the the government research labs and testing labs. Excellent. Okay. Well, looking forward to hearing on the future of that. Um, so. In that case, I will, I guess we'll call it, we'll call it a day today, a little early, have some time for, before you gotta get to your one o'clock. Um, everybody have a safe, sane, and fantastic holiday season. Be generous to everyone, especially yourself. Um, have a good, make the best, or at least the best you can of the rest of 2020. And we look forward to hearing from all of you next year. Thank you, thank you, Chuck. Um, if you want to close us out, that'd be great. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it, Megan. Uh, uh, again, if there's any questions, uh, my email is there. If, uh, I want to copy the research paper uh, and the presentation. I think it's uh, will be posted by uh, ICF. Thanks very yeah. much. Thank you. Have a good one.